Welcome to this introduction to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. My name is Ingo Hilgefort and I will be your host for this session. In this session, we will take a quick look at the overall menu structure, at the different asset types we can create in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, and we will take a look how we can create a new space. So let's start looking at the menu structure. On the top left, you can decide if you want to see the icons or the actual text. If you look at the menu files, this is your repository. Here you can find all the different things you create, either as part of Analytics Cloud or as part of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. You do have the ability to filter down the list. You can also decide which elements of the information you would like to see. If we go to the business catalog, this is where you see all the different assets that you created and all the metadata and all the business relevant information. Right now it is empty, but we will fill it over time. The story builder is actually SAP Analytics Cloud. Here you would start build your analytics stories. In the data builder, this is where you would do the data modeling. You create tables, views, and relationship models. The data integration monitor allows you to actually configure tables from a remote source, either to be a remote source or to be actually uploaded into Data Warehouse Cloud. As part of the space management, you create and manage your spaces. In the content network, you can see you have the ability to leverage business content sample content, and this is where you would do your lifecycle management. In the security area, you would create users and roles. And in the administration area, you can configure your data provisioning agents, your auditing and your IP whitelisting. So let's go back to the data builder and take a look at what the different asset types are that we can create. As you can see here, we have different kind of assets. So let's start clarifying what these asset types actually mean as part of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. We will start with the tables area. As part of the tables area, you have the option to either create a new table or to import a ZSV file. In this case, the table means basically a local table. It is not a table, for example, in an on-premise HANA or SAP BW system. When you import the ZSV file, you also create a table, but you're basically using the ZSV file as a starting point. As part of the views, you can see you have the option to either use a graphical environment or you can use the option to create a view based on SQL and enter the SQL statement directly. A view is basically the ability for you to take tables or already existing views and combine them. When you go to the entity relationship model, this is where you would actually create exactly what it says, an entity relationship model. You would define how your tables or your views are actually being joined and you define it once so that when someone else creates actually a view on top of the tables or the views, that those joints would be already there and suggested. Another area is the space management. Here you basically can create, manage and edit your own spaces. A space is a virtual environment that you can actually assign to your users and roles you assign resources such as a connection to a space and a space is basically a fundamental part of your data warehouse cloud structure so you will have you know your models allocated to a space your connections allocated to a space and your users will have configured rights for the space so let's go ahead and create our very first own space we're going to click on the plus sign and then we enter a name and you can see the space ID is being suggested for us based on the name. If we wish, 
we can change it as well. Now, as part of the configuration, we can assign how much space we want overall and how much of the space is being allocated for the in-memory option. So we're going to configure a five gigabyte space and half of it as in-memory. We can then also configure a space priority, which becomes relevant when multiple users have requests. Important, you can always click on the little question mark and open up the help, and then you can see the details of what this property is, which is very, very helpful. So after we configure the space priority, we also need to assign a user to our space. So we're quickly going to do that. We pick the user from the list and assign it to our space. And then we can actually save our space. For now, we don't need a connection to it because we're going to use local files and upload them. And we will configure the connections later on. So we save our space and we will use the spice in our next session when we start creating the tables. I want to say thank you for watching and listening.